Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. There has been a long running argument about carbon fiber when it comes to antenna masts and how they interact. And so I have three different carbon fiber antennas that I wanna share with you guys. I gotta get in on this, I gotta get to the bottom of this, I gotta get some answers for you. First up, this is a car mounted antenna, 3824 at the bottom, but we're hams, we can adapt that to anything. We can stick it on a tripod and use it in the field or whatnot, but being a car mounted antenna, it is rated at 28 to 29.7 megahertz. Sounds a lot like you can probably get 10, 11, and 12 on that. We're gonna find out. And then when we're all done with that in a future video, we're gonna do the other carbon fiber. These are the telescopic masts, and we're gonna get to the bottom of what those guys are. So be sure you're subscribed for when those come out. Right now, let's get this thing taken out of the packaging and put on the truck. You guys don't wanna see an unboxing, especially when it's an untubing. I'm just gonna do this and show you what it comes with. Pay no attention to what I'm doing right now. This has nothing to do with the content of the video. And really, I mean, just fast forward a couple of seconds until you see the rest of it. I think, I think the instructions are on the other side. I was right. So there was something interesting in the Amazon listing versus the instructions. So I wanna check this out real quick, make sure that I didn't remember this wrong. Yeah, so there's this big yellow warning at the bottom here, and it says, when the loaded coil of the antenna is removed, the whip itself cannot resonate on any frequency. However, you can mount it on other 3 8 24 threaded loaded coils. So I'm gonna test to see if that's accurate or not, because on the website it says you can mount it with or without. You know, it's either 3 8 24 female or 3 8 24 male, because there is an adapter somewhere in here as well. So this seems more like a uh, fencing foil than an antenna. There is that loading coil that they're talking about and the base of the antenna is 3 8 24 to go onto the loading coil. So that would be the entire loading coil and this is actually probably, without weighing it, this is actually probably heavier than the whole rest of the antenna. But that gives me another dilemma because I don't have a 3 8 24 mounting stud on my truck. Let me show you what I got. Hi, this is the antenna mount that I have on my truck and I've had this on my last three Fords and you can see that the angle's a little bit differently because Ford trucks used to go like that and now they're, they're big and tall and crazy. What I do have, however, like every ham is a collection of adapters. So I have a PL259 to go onto the SO239 on the truck and then that turns into an N female. And then I have an N male to PL259, and then I have a SO239 to 3824, and that's either 3824 male or female. Why not go crazy with adapters, right? And of course we know that this forms a balanced connection all the way through to the base of the antenna, right? So what they say is you can't resonate on any frequency without this loading coil. But what I'm gonna do is what you all know that I always do, is see where it resonates without it. And it does come with the adapter to, to make this go into this female 3 8 24, but it's also 3 8 24 on its own and I have this adapter mess, so I'm not gonna add another adapter to this. I'm just gonna start with whatever I have and check this out. It's spring-loaded. So you can run into stuff with it. Let's go see the radio. So now that I'm in the truck, why not introduce yet another adapter? This is a BNC male to SO239 again, because under my driver's seat here, I have the coax that comes from the other end of that fender mount. It's, it's crazy that I've been using that fender mount on trucks that were made in 1999, all the way up to this one made in 2024. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Zygu X6100 radio. We'll show you that in a second. It, I mean, you can kind of see it already. But the reason why I use this is because it has those fancy SWR graphs and it's a lot easier and faster to set up than say something like a Nano VNA. Let's see, 24, 28, it says it's gonna be resonant on 28. So I'm gonna go into app, SWR scan, and this is without the loading coil. And I would expect that to be bad because, you know, Gable does a pretty good job on making antennas and they know what they're talking about. But what I can't tell is whether it's too long or too short. And every time I move this thing to get out of the glare, it goes right back into glare mode. All right, so that's 
that's pretty high, whatever, whatever it is. That's seven ish to one SWR. Let's try for grins, six meters. There we go. Look at that. I was not expecting that. That's kind of an added bonus. So that's six meters, the low side of six meters, 51, 192 to 51, 806, 808. And it's flat across the band. So you've got yourself a nice six meter antenna right away. Let's tune up to the higher portion of the band. <laughs> We're good all across six meters. I'm gonna put that loading coil in, which should get us to 28, like it says on the label. Let's take a look at that. All right, so 3 8 24, six meter antenna. And for reference, where's the end? The, my fingertip is gonna be I'm six foot two, so this is about three foot. Fingertip to far shoulder blade. We can get some real measurements here in a minute and, and drop those on the camera. I gotta get all my adapters back on. And I'll leave a better adapter in the description for you. I just wanna get this thing done and, and in your in your eyeballs, in your brains, so you know that it exists and what it can do. I mean, this doesn't look ghetto at all, right? All right, we've got the loading coil on and the mess of adapters. Let's get back in and look at the radio. This is supposed to be 28 megahertz. There we go, 28. Let's do the scan. There we go, much better. It's amazing what a loading coil can do. Perfect, I like it. Okay, so here is the weird thing. I'm gonna take it out of 28 and I'm gonna to go to 24. There's a couple of things that I wanna do personally as a ham, and that is I wanna be as lazy as possible and operate from my vehicle on 20 meters during the day and 40 meters at night, and I don't wanna get out and change ham stick. So I'm gonna check the other side. I'm gonna, we did 28, which is 10 meters. We're gonna do 27 and we're gonna do 24 which gets you 10, 11, and 12, and then we'll do 20 and 40. So that's 28, let's get us down to 27, there we go, 27 something. All right, that is perfectly tunable because we're hovering around two to one, and you can see that it's getting better as it gets to 28 megahertz like it's supposed to, and let's tune it. And it tuned, of course it tuned. Why wouldn't it tune? You'll see it bad until we get to the spot where we tuned, it'll dip down to one to one right there, and then back out again. All right, let's go to turn the tuner off. Let's go to 12. 12 is pretty high. We're at four and a half to one. And I know this tuner can handle it. Yep, no problem. And again, we'll see that dip where the tuner kicks in and we'll see the tuner kick back out again. Right there, right there. And we're good to go. Okay, let's get up to 20. Let's see what's gonna happen. Yeah, four and a half to five. That's the tune from 12 meters. So we know it can get close. Let's see if it can get all the way. Oh, it was struggling a bit there. Still struggling. All right. It took a while. This thing never says like success. It just ends its cycle. Yeah, it didn't really tune 20 all that good. Best is three to one. Interesting. Well, if it didn't tune 20, then it can't possibly tune 40, right? Yeah, it's struggling. Oh, wow, nine to one. Eight and a half, nine to one. Oh, look, it did tune it. Ha <laughs> ha, that's awesome. And we got two little dips there. That's pretty sweet. All right, so I have two more tests for you. One is I'm gonna see how it looks on two meters. And the other one is I'm gonna do an FT8 coverage map on a carbon fiber antenna and figure out how it is on the band that it is designed to run on, which is 10 meters. So move over Zygu, enter ICOM. This is my ICOM 705. This is an all band, all mode radio which means it does two meters and 70 centimeters. Oh, there's an interesting hash pattern for you in an RV park, but we're not interested in 160 meters. We're interested in two meters. Oh, wow, that's, that's horrible, that's S9 noise. It's not the antenna's fault that it's so sensitive and picking up so much noise. But what I wanna see is the SWR. I'm not a fan of the SWR chart in this radio because it won't, it won't let you scan out of band. Yeah, it's not gonna work on two meters, but apparently it's perfectly okay on 70 centimeters, really? So step one is remove the antenna from the car. And then over here, I have this fancy new antenna set up for the front of my RV, which just happens to be 3 8 24. Let's give you an aerial view of the aerial. New antenna is installed. Let's take a look inside. Loading coil two. 
time to do some indoor work. And we're immediately getting decodes on FT8. So 10 meters is active and I am getting some decodes. So we're gonna keep playing and I'll show you some reception reports from people who have heard me. This is my first volley. The second volley's already happened. I'll refresh the screen for that and then we'll show you the third volley which is happening right now. But my first attempt at getting out, I'm getting minus 13, minus 16, minus 11, minus four. I'm at five watts from Arizona. This is me down here in the lower corner south of Tucson and I'm getting pretty good circle. Okay, so now let's ask a little question here. How come I don't see this circle going over here? Well, it's because there's nobody there. How come I don't see it going farther? Well, maybe we'll see it going farther if I update the display. Nothing yet, they're all asleep over there. That's, that's the gray line. But I'm also only using five watts, and this is great. Look how much more that filled in. That was three volleys while we were talking. So minus 21, minus 20 up into New Brunswick. Minus 21, minus 21. We got uh, minus 16 into the Caribbean, the Caribbean. We're getting up into Canada. Minus four into North Dakota. This is fantastic. Put that little tiny antenna. Nice. So at the bottom it says, however, you can mount it on other 3 8 24 threaded coils. So you know what we have to do? We have to mount it on another 3 8 24 loaded coil. Watch this. I think you guys can see where I'm going with this. So first, let's get this guy here out. This is Gable's ultimate antenna tripod, which can't even get the whole thing in the frame. There you go. It's upside down right now, because what it's supposed to do is go like that. And this is a 3 8 24 on top and an SO239 on the bottom to connect to your coax. But I can also go like this. And now I've got my antenna mounted on the tripod and ready to go for portable work. But let's take this coil out. And while we're at it, let's get rid of this 3 8 24 mount and let's grab the SO239 mount. And now I can put my SO239 coil on. And at the top of that coil, I can put this whip. Well, that stinks, that's not 3 8 24, that's M10. Well, it turns out that this loading coil right here is M10. I bet Gable has an adapter for M10 to 3 8 Let's go take a look at that. So this is that better SO239 PL259 to 3 8 24 stud as opposed to that janky bit of male to female to end to PL to 3 8 24. So I gotta add one of those to my cart. And then this is their M10 1.0 to 3 8 24 to get me into that whip. There you go. But where I was headed with that is this coil. If you haven't seen me demonstrate this in previous videos, check out that engraving. It allows me to add inductance, just like any other sliding coil would, like your Wolf River coils, etc. But this is so much more compact and so much thinner. This takes the whip that it comes with, because it does come with its own whip. This thing here takes you from 50 megahertz, six meters, to 40 meters, seven megahertz. And then there's an additional coil that you can get with this that I have, it's, it's out in the truck, that will get you onto 80 meters. So I'm not sure what it will get you with that whip, but it'll get you a lot more than just 28 megahertz that that whip is designed for because you've got all of this to play with now. So lots and lots of options from Gable. I will leave some links in the description down below for this new carbon fiber antenna. It'll bend over if you, if you run into a gas pump or something like, well, not if you run into a gas pump, that will probably set the building on fire. If you run into one of those overhead things like a car wash or a parking garage, or your own garage door or something like that, it'll, it'll move out of the way. And it's not only flexible on the whip itself, it's also got the spring at the bottom. So I'll leave a link in the description down below for that. We tested it on 70 centimeters, six meters and 10 meters, and it worked pretty darn good. Be sure you are subscribed to see the review of the telescoping carbon fiber mass. But so far, I'm pretty happy with carbon fiber and I don't see, I don't see a problem with it. While you're waiting for those videos to come out, there is a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.